Today, we're gonna beef up your courtroom arguments by talking about probative value. But first, we gotta roll the intro. Welcome to Law Venture, my name is Jarrett Stone. If this is your first time checking out a video from this channel, then I recommend that you go in the description, you check out some freebies. You can get something like this, you can get something like that, all for free. All right, let's talk about probative value. And to begin, we first need to talk about the definition of what probative value actually is. Probative value is the usefulness of proving or disproving a fact during trial. In other words, probative value goes towards the strengths of a particular piece of evidence that's either gonna help your case or weaken the other side's case. For example, if you were to find a smoking gun, that's definitely going to help your case and that's definitely gonna weaken the other side's case. So there's a high degree of probative value. Now, that's pretty simple. So let's move on to the primary uses whenever you're gonna be using the phrase probative value in making your arguments to the court. One of the most common uses of probative value in an argument in front of the judge is whenever you argue the issue of relevance. Keep in mind, relevance does not mean the same thing as probative value. They're not synonymous. In fact, if you look at Federal Rules of Evidence, Rule 401, you'll see that relevance is actually made up of two elements. There needs to be a material issue and there also needs to be probative value with a particular piece of evidence. Notice, probative value is an element of relevance, so they're not synonymous, they're not the same. A lot of lawyers get that confused. So this means that whenever you argue the issue of relevance, which comes up a lot, then you need to make the argument involving probative value that if something is irrelevant, there is no probative value. If something is relevant, then there is probative value. It's an important distinction that you need to make and it's something you need to make super clear to the judge involving probative value. So let's talk about the second and probably most important use of the phrase probative value in the courtroom. Rule 403 is the ultimate catch-all objection. That means it can be brought up a ton during the course of trial and that means that you need to have the language down pat because Rule 403 hinges on an analysis that involves probative value. If you don't know what I'm talking about, or if you wanna basically study up on 403 a little bit more, I highly recommend that you watch this video sliding above. Now let's say you're trying to keep evidence out. You most likely are gonna make the relevance objection first, and then you're gonna follow that up with a rule 403. So if the judge determines that the particular piece of evidence is relevant, that means the judge has determined there is some probative value. This particular piece of evidence may either help the other side or it may weaken your particular case but the judge hasn't determined at that point, unless the judge says so, whether or not the probative value is high or whether or not the probative value is super low. So that's why you always wanna have that catch-all 403 objection. So if you're trying to keep a particular piece of evidence out by claiming that it's unfairly prejudicial, the argument you're gonna make is that the probative value is little to none and it's substantially outweighed by the unfairly prejudicial effect. And in that particular instance, you're again using probative value and you're explaining to the judge that this particular piece of evidence may weaken our case. It may bolster their case, but it's substantially outweighed by the unfairly prejudicial value. So by using that type of terminology, probative value, the judge knows exactly what you're talking about. And the judge understands, but there's a caveat. If you ever, are in front of the jury and you're making maybe a closing argument and you're trying to show that a particular piece of evidence that the other side introduced isn't super useful or it's not very convincing, I recommend that you don't use the phrase probative value to the judge or to the jury, excuse me, because probative value is, isn't really a common phrase that's used. To be honest with you, if you would have asked me before law school what the phrase probative value actually means, I probably would have tried to BS my way into an answer by saying, yeah, isn't that a math term where you carry the two, move the decimal over, and then multiply by the denominator? And then I would have tried to use the word hypotenuse because that just sounds fancy. Well, you don't wanna use the word probative value because the jury may be filled with people like me to where they don't know what probative value actually means and if you're using that in your argument, you're probably trying to argue that something isn't particularly useful. And that's an important point to make. And that's an important point that you want to be clear. So instead of using legalese like probative value, 
you may just wanna switch the terminology and use usefulness or maybe describe what probative value is in a little bit more detail so that the jury understands. By the way, if you don't understand anything in this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to clear something up. And by the way, if you're still watching at this point, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe button is over there and I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks.